Hello again from the depths of Whitechapel. Not wishing to appear, uh, appear entirely parochial, I'd like to say a few words about the American presidential election, skipping the Jeremy Kyle encounters, the accusations and counter-accusations, and assorted ballyhoo and razzmatazz. First of all, both candidates are obvious control freaks. One, steely, slick, well-rehearsed, right down to the shoulder shrugs. The other one is an out-of-control, spiralling into a freak uncharted orbit. With such a choice, I think there will be a low turnout with a record number of votes going to the remaining no-hopers, such as the Greens and the Libertarian Party. It's not the result that counts, it's the aftermath. If Trump is trumped and refuses to accept the result, there is more than likely to be extensive turmoil the nation fracturing well beyond what we saw in the 1960s. His plebeian supporters could take to the streets and vent their frustrations in a manner that could rapidly develop beyond passive demonstration or protest. The turmoil, turmoil usually associated with a black ghetto, could spread into the rust belts of North America. It will certainly be go beyond Trump and his regressive ideas and poses, entering unknown but interesting territory. This Trump phenomena is mainly a product of alienation. America is far more, remember, than the liberal enclaves on the East and West coasts. A vast swathe of the population, in particular the white, black, Hispanic, blue-collar workers, are fed up with the entire political establishment. For untold millions, the American dream ain't working. It's becoming a nightmare. For decades, wages have been virtually frozen, well-paid jobs are shrinking, while the less than $10 an hour jobs are multiplying. For the majority of working class Americans and poor, it's a permanent recession, and they justifiably feel totally ignored and disrespected. In a warped manner, Trump himself addressed the very population that are least likely to vote for him and hit the nail right on the head when he asked, what have the Democrat, Democrats, apart from relying on your votes, ever done for you? And just look at the situation in the non-middle class black areas. Horrific one-on-one -on -one crime levels, drug epidemics, poverty, marginalisation, police brutality, black-on-black -black homicide. The entire justice system resulted in the mass incarceration of black men in particular. So really, as I said, it's not the result that counts but the aftermath. Here in the UK, the smug liberal establishment, right through to the rabid tabloid media at home, pressing for further to the nationalistic and xenophobic right, are all dismissive of Trump. This is because he's dangerously rocking the boat. They fear a Brexit-type surprise, despite Clinton being well ahead in the polls. They fear instability in the USA could have a resonance here. America, with all its glaring faults, are still evolving their system for good or mostly bad. We still have the same rotten, almost identical system they dumped through force of arms about 240 years ago. We are still long, long overdue a rebellion or a revolution here to rid ourselves of what they did all those years ago. But we need to make a hell of a lot of a better job of it. We have nothing to be smug about. Sure, Trump is a dangerous clown, but look at the state of politics here in the UK. If there were to be a snap election, the Tories would win with an increased majority. Sure, Labour may have picked up hundreds of thousands of new members, but just recollect the fate of the Italian Communist Party, which reached in the 1970s and 80s over a million members, yet never became the government. One thing the Trump and Corbyn phenomena have in common, despite the entirely different politics, is that the enthusiasts who flooded into the respective campaigns have an obvious tendency to project their aspirations and frustrations on their saviour figures. There's an almost millennial feel to their respective camps. Both will end, inevitably, in violent recrimination and the bitterest of tears. Except that in America... The population is armed, and so therefore the state, unlike here, doesn't have the total monopoly of violence. And also about the Americans. They watch The Walking Dead with its proletarian heroes 
rather than tuning into the election programs, campaign ads, or news channels. One other thing, on Saturday the 29th of this month, at noon at the Anarchist Book Fair, Fair myself and Lisa McKenzie will have a meeting, the title of which is, Is Revolutionary Working Class Politics Back on the Agenda? I hope to see you there. So, for now, bye.